Well, hello everybody and welcome to Lunch Break Live. Real talk about obesity, food addiction, recovery, and what's really eating you. I am Carrie De La Cruz here with you on a, hmm, hazy Monday afternoon in Southern California where the weather is mild. I can't figure it all out. And you know what? The funny thing is people in California complain about the weather uh, no matter what it is, unless it's a sunny in 72, which it very clearly is not today. So anyway, um, I want to welcome you all in. I'm so happy that you're joining me again, spending your lunch hour or half hour with me. And of course, before I launch into all of this subject, and by the way, the title of today's show is It's Unacceptable. <laughs> that ought to get your attention, huh? Before I launch into the subject, I want to find out Who's here? I see my mama there. I see Nancy. Hi, Nancy. And uh, again, Facebook, very slow to give me feedback. So if you guys are here and I don't see you, I'm not ignoring you. I just don't see you. But I'm dying to know who's here that maybe this is your first time or you're still, you still consider yourself a newbie. If you're here, maybe you could just throw some thumbs up or give me an I am, I am. Any, any newbies here joining me for the maybe first, second, I don't know, third time? Um, okay, if not, how about my regulars? Now, I know I already have you present and accounted for, Mama. Um, Carol and Nancy, I have you guys. And okay, Christy, it looks like Christy's here because my mom just did a shout out. By the way, we have decided that my mom is like the Walmart greeter <laughs> for my show. So, hi, Melissa, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So, yeah, my mom is like the Walmart greeter. She welcomes everybody in with a smile, you know, uh, helps you to find a comfortable seat, uh, makes you feel welcomed and accepted here. So, thanks for doing that, Mom. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm really glad that you are here, Melissa. All right. So, um, you know, without further ado, because we do know, hi, Christy, that my shows can run on the longer side of things. I'm going to launch right into this today. Um, now, acceptance. Okay, obviously, if I'm talking about something that's unacceptable, hi, Jessica, something that's unacceptable. Well, the flip side of that is acceptable, which is acceptance. And I think that is uh, a concept that a lot of us struggle with uh, in one way, shape, or form. Okay, so with acceptance, I'm just going to say that is a friend of recovery and an enemy of denial. So you could see what side of this I'm going to be coming down on today. Uh, let's see here. I kind of thought about this and realized that there are maybe three ways that you can look at the idea of acceptance. There's like the emotional acceptance, there's physical acceptance, and then there's maybe even mental acceptance, okay? So like when we're talking about emotional, we're talking about being understood. So if you are accepted emotionally, you know, you're understood, right? Uh, maybe if it's physical, you are receiving something, you are accepting something, taking it in, okay? Or if it's mental that we're talking about, it's a sense of belonging, being a part of a group, being accepted into um, a group and sharing their values, okay? See what I mean? All right, other words that we can talk about when we're talking about acceptance. Agreement, receipt, adequate, suitable, uh, admission, welcome, favorable, reception, adoption, obtaining, receipt, I already said that one, that must be very, very important to me, hmm. taking, so like, you know, if you're receiving something, you're also taking it, aren't you? Um, you're consenting, okay, if you uh, are accepting, you're saying, okay, I accept the terms and conditions of the sale, even if I didn't read them, I'm going to click the box so I can get what I want. Um, approval, maybe it is, you know, approval of whatever's happening here, you accept it, okay, um, Assuming responsibility for, it. okay, I'll accept that. All right, that'll, I'll take that on. That'll be my role, okay? Or uh, belief, you know? Accepting that is, maybe it's a belief. So what are some kinds of things that we accept? I kind of had fun with this list. Money, that's a good one to accept, don't you think? I'll accept your money. How about this one, a job offer. I accept a job offer. Heck yeah, that's a good one. Oh, a marriage proposal. I hope you accept. I mean, if it's a good person. All right. Um, oh, you accept an apology or forgiveness for something. Bribes. Yep, we could accept bribes. Change. Now, this is something you have to accept. 
I didn't say this was easy. See, acceptance, not always easy, not always cut and dry. Loss. We have to accept loss, okay? Again, the acceptance, that's why it is one of the stages of grief. Acceptance, okay? Nobody said it was easy. Or the situation, or circumstances, or condition, or whatever's happening right now. You accept it, okay? So those are some of the things that we can accept. And when I look at the definition of acceptance, I kind of look at it, or the concept of it, I look at it as letting go. That not giving up in the sense of um, like rolling over and just saying, eh, I, I can't do anything about it anyway. I mean, uh, not exactly. I mean, that may be the net result, but that's not the idea that I'm talking about. When I'm talking about letting go, because, uh, well, I'll get into it here a little bit. As in letting go of, here are some things that you would let go of in order to allow acceptance to um, take hold of the situation in your life, okay? You ready? So we can let go of pretense especially the false pretenses. Disagreement, which does not necessarily mean that we agree just because we disagree. We just agree to disagree agreeably, okay? Uh, blindness, we can let go of blindness, okay? And we can accept vision, which is to see things as they truly are. We can um, uh, let go of ignorance. So that means we accept the information that we're being given, the wisdom, Okay, the information, the knowledge, we can let go of preconceived notions. See, preconceived notions get in the way of acceptance, don't they? So we can let go of preconceived notions, certitude and rigidity. Hallmarks for me, okay? I'm wow, yeah, that was that was me, and I still tend to go that way. The the certitude and rigidity. You see, it's really hard. Those can be in conflict with accepting certain situations if I am rigidly opposed, right? Not, it's not making it um, real amenable for me to be accepting of things. That gets in my way, and that's the uh, opposite of letting go. Uh, how about this one? Perfection. Yeah, there's another one for me. Man, was I on to me or what? Perfection. Letting go of that perfectionism, the perfectionistic tendencies, the idea that things will be perfect and there is such a thing as perfection, with human beings anyway, that impedes acceptance. So that is one of those things we want to let go for sure. Uh, you know what? Sometimes it's going to involve letting go of people and relationships. And again, I know that seems contrary because accepting, you usually uh, imagine things coming in, coming this way, and letting go is, it seems to be contrary to accepting. But you see, are we accepting the reality of the relationship, the reality of the person, the way they really are instead of the way we wanted them to be, which I'm going to be talking about momentarily? Letting go of disappointment, uh, unrealistic expectations. Anger, anger gets in the way of acceptance, doesn't it, right? Um, dreams, yeah. Sometimes we have to let go of dreams. We do. We have to accept that those dreams may not become a reality or did not become a reality. We have to accept that. Um, <clears throat> resistance, let's see. We have to let go of that resistance, that you know, gets in the way that where we stand our ground def in defiance or in the face of facts to the contrary. We've got to let go of that resistance. Um, let's see, people in relationships, what else? Disappointment, oh, self-criticism. Well, self-criticism, that's going to step all over acceptance, isn't it? Because we're always going to criticize something that we don't want to accept or don't believe we can accept or think is unacceptable, aren't we? So we have got to let go of that self-criticism if we want to grab hold of acceptance in our lives of recovery, okay? Another one to let go of, denial. Like I said at the top of the show, acceptance is the enemy of denial, okay? So we have got to let go of that denial so we can grab hold of or accept the possibilities, okay? Uh, and lack of control. Hmm, yeah, gotta let go of that one, guys. How many of us say we have control issues? How many of us say, oh, I love this one. I'm just anal retentive, that's all. I'm a control freak. And we say it, you know, proudly. 
Really? Is that something really to be proud of? I mean, come on, guys. We, uh, a lot of us are power hungry. Uh, we want to control. I, I, I think it's, I'd be hard pressed to find someone who's not uh, a little bit, you know, of a control freak. I, I really would. I think it, even if you may not be overt about it, you could be very, very subtly manipulative about it. But come on, don't we all want to have control over our destiny, over our situations, our circumstances, over other people, over our physical condition? Don't we want to have control over the traffic conditions on the freeway, over the weather? Doesn't matter what it is. So we have got to let go of that desire to have control. We've got to accept that reality, that lack of control. Let go of the desire to control, all right? So we're talking about acceptance, right? And those are things that we need to let go of in order to be able to accept and grab hold of our recoveries fully, okay? So you guys, the big, um, what is the word, idiom of the day or the big phrase or the meme is, you know, and I know this is maybe even a few years old, but people still say, it is what it is. It is what it is. Now, where did that come from? I know a lot of people can't stand it because it seems, you know, passive or laissez-faire or, you know, worse, it sounds like you're giving up. You know, it's just like, oh, well, what can you do? I can't do anything about it, so I'm just going to roll over and die. Oh, well. Oh, well. Not gonna, what that's saying is, oh, I'm just not going to feel bad about it. You know, I can't do anything about it, so I might as well get over it and get on with it. Anyway. Okay, but I think in doing that, it's taking on that whatever attitude, okay, and we miss the point of what's really happening, and maybe we skim right over acceptance, right? When we say it is what it is, we might have skimmed right over acceptance for what it really is. What is it that is, okay? So I know that can get in the way, and it feels powerless. It can make you feel very powerless, like, Oh well, shrugging your shoulders. It's like a it's like a virtual shoulder shrug. Oh well, right? But I think there is power in letting go. Not giving up, but letting go. You see there's a big difference there. When we say I accept what is, isn't that different than saying it is what it is? I accept what is because I'm willing to let go of preconceived notions, the belief that something needed to be perfect, the belief that I had control, whatever that looks like, okay? It is not the same thing as saying it doesn't matter. It isn't, okay? We've just got to look at what it is that would be, how we'd be best served in our recovery. Um, what, what is it best to say? It is what it is. Oh, well, I can't do anything about it because that's usually what follows in our minds. Or is it better to say, I accept what is, okay? I would like to change it, but maybe I don't have the power to change it, so I accept what is. Or, you know what, accepting what is doesn't mean it's going to remain permanent either, but it's saying this is the circumstance in which I find myself currently. Okay, good enough. Not powerless, right? Do you guys agree? What do you think? Yes, yes? Give me some thumbs up or some happy faces that say, yeah, I agree with that. Or some sad faces or some mad faces if you don't agree with me, that works too. All right. Now, I love this one. Okay, there we go. I got some some stuff popping up, some thumbs up. Thank you guys. Now, this is something that Christy, my new friend, Christy Gutierrez, who, I'm, is it okay? I'm, I'm hoping it's okay. I think you're pretty open about this, Christy, about the fact that she has grabbed a hold of, and le, of uh, OA, Overeaters Anonymous, and let go of hopelessness, let go of the feeling of being powerless and grabbed hold of the power that she does have. I love that. And she's so excited because she has um, found a home with uh, other people who feel the same way that she feels, especially around food, the relationship with food. They have an unhealthy relationship with food and they have learned how to uh, cohabitate with it in a healthier way. So I love this and this is true. She brought this up to me just last week and it's so um, profoundly fitting today. Um, the goal is to accept things as they are, not as you wish them to be. Okay, that's very powerful. And if you say it right now, say it out loud about something in your life that's getting in the way, whatever that thing is that's getting stuck in your craw, I accept my shrinkles as they are, not as I wish them to be. I accept, right? I accept my thick ankles as genetic realities and not as they wish them to be, which would be like my mother-in-law's lovely little delicate ankles. <laughs> That's reality, okay? Nobody said I had to like it, but it is true, okay? See, 
I am accepting things as they are, not as I wish them to be. I would encourage you guys to begin doing that in your lives, especially when you find yourselves struggling to accept things. Say, can I accept it as it is? Am I, why am I struggling to accept it? Is it because I want it so desperately to be different? And it can't be, okay? Something very, very powerful there. There's a reason it's a part of 12-step recovery. It's because it's so vital. See, cornerstone of recovery. It is the friend of recovery, acceptance, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, what gets in the way? Okay, what are some of the things that get in the way of our being able to accept things? Oh, I think there's this little thing called acceptance. Acceptance, you know, like accept not accept, so like with an E, E-X-C-E-P-T, accept, all right? So like, you take exception to things that you don't want to accept. You take exception to things you don't want to believe or things you know you don't want to encourage or things that you don't want to receive. I take exception to that. I think taking exception can get in the way of being accepting, all right? So acceptance. E-X-C-E-P-T-A-N-C-E. -E -E. My own word. I don't know. Maybe that's getting in your way. Uh, things we struggle to accept. All right? I think it's fair to say that we struggle to accept, many of us, forgiveness. Right? Whether it's forgiveness from others or from ourselves. Right? How many of us blame ourselves for our circumstances and will not forgive ourselves? Well, this is a biggie. We need to accept forgiveness, whether it's being given to us by others or by ourselves, all right? Um, apologies. You know, it's a little different than forgiveness. I know they often go hand in hand, but I'm sorry. I apologize. We need to accept those and say, I accept your apology. Not just okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Or no problem, because it might have been a problem. How many of us, when someone says, oh, I'm sorry, oh, no problem, well, then why are they apologizing if it wasn't a problem? I don't really understand that. So let's think about that and say, oh, I accept your apology. Or, all right, uh, all right, I can accept your apology. Mm -hmm, I got it. You know, I'm not saying you have to be gleeful and happy and joyful, but these are the things that get in the way of our acceptance of things, is our unwillingness to accept apologies, um, forgiveness. How about judgment? Judgment gets in the way of acceptance because we judge things harshly or we judge things unfairly or we judge them as we what? want them to be, not as they are. Uh, being wrong, woo wee, being wrong can get in the way of being able to accept things, right? The truth, the reality. Oh, no, 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 I cannot be wrong, absolutely not. I mean, this cracks me up. You know, there are just some people who might be staying with me right now, whom I love very, very much, who, just cannot accept the fact that they may not be absolutely 100% about everything, including, I don't know, is that really rosemary or is it a pine tree? Okay, so it's silly, but when we have that propensity uh, to just blindly go about uh, being rigid and saying, nope, not going to accept it, can't be wrong, can't be wrong, can't be wrong, can't be wrong at all costs, okay? Look, I got my stuff big time. I, wow, I mean, that would get in the way, that, that need to not be wrong. Woo, that got in the way of so much of my recovery until I realized that's what it was, and it still rose its ugly head. And I've learned to be more aware of it and more accepting of the fact that that is one of my defects. You know, that need, that tremendous need to be right, inability to be wrong. So those get in the way of being able to accept. How about this one, not knowing the answer? Well, we have to be able to accept that fact. We have to be able to accept the fact that sometimes we are just not gonna know the answer. Likewise, we have to be able to accept the fact that sometimes people are gonna judge us harshly. People we don't even know. And we have to accept the fact that we judge ourselves and consider what we're going to do about it. Because we certainly don't have to accept that behavior from ourselves, do we? But from others, can't control others, right? Comes back to that control thing. So let's see, what else do we struggle to accept? Not understanding something. It's very hard when we don't understand something. We can't accept the fact that, you know, some things we just don't understand, you know, and we want to bang our head on the desk and say, why can't I just get it? I cannot accept the fact that I cannot understand this. Well, sometimes there's just going to be things like, you know, calculus that we just don't understand. All right? Or compound interest. You know, whatever. Things we don't understand. Why people do certain things. 
Why did they do that? Why did they treat me that way? Why do they talk to me that way? Why? I don't know. Just not going to understand. But accept the fact that that is who they are maybe. Okay. All right. How about this one? We're going to have to accept the fact that there will be hurt and sadness and pain in life. Well, that gets in the way. We struggle to accept that, don't we? Hurt and sadness and pain. Nobody wants to be unhappy. No one wants to be hurt. No one wants to be sad, right? Okay, that we can struggle to accept that, but that is a reality of life. We need to accept that. Discontent. There are going to be times when we are not content. We are just not content. Not okay with something. Well, we have to accept the fact that that just may be a reality and we may not be okay with it, but it's just going to have to be the way that it is. Loss. Oh, there will be loss in life. If you have pets, they're going to die. They're going to go over that rainbow bridge. Or they're going to run away. We're going to lose them. You know, maybe we're going to lose friends that we thought would be with us for a lifetime. Or maybe we're going to lose relationships through divorce. Maybe we're going to lose people through death. Maybe we're going to lose, you know, a house, you know, because you couldn't pay the mortgage. Maybe we're going to lose a car because you couldn't pay the car payment, whatever. There's going to be loss. Of course, there's going to be loss of weight as well. And think about, this is kind of a funny one. How many people struggle to accept weight loss, to actually embrace the weight that they've lost because they still look at themselves in the mirror and say, oh, no, 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 I'm still fat. Well, I think that is not accepting loss. If you ask me, I don't know. You could think about that one. Here's a biggie. And this is kind of the one that motivated the talk for today. Compliments. You knew I was going to say it. You knew I was going to say it. This is what started it, okay? My mother-in-law, God love her. Yesterday morning, we're getting ready for church, and she looked gorgeous. I mean, had her hair all done, beautiful pearl earrings, little drop earrings, and a bracelet, and a, and a necklace, and she was wearing this gorgeous kind of fiery orangey red embroidered or crocheted or whatever top. And she looked stunning. She just looked beautiful. I said, oh, you look so beautiful. And you know what she said? She said, look at my old pants. Yep, that's what she said. Look at my old pants. And I said, I didn't even notice your pants. Well, you should because they're really old. But they're way down there and they're black. And, and you look so beautiful up here. I didn't even know. And look how pretty your shoes are. Sure, underneath the old pants. I mean, really? Okay. It's funny when we see it on other people, but I wanted her to accept the compliment and really believe that she was as beautiful as I thought she was. She rejected my compliment. She shut me down. She did not accept it. Well, how often do we do that? When someone says, oh, you're looking good. Oh, no, I still got like 50 pounds to go to a goal. No. Oh, you look really great. Oh, no, no, I've gained 10 pounds. I couldn't possibly look great. Oh, I love your hair. This, it's all faded out. I need to get it done again. I'm not saying I'm guilty of that. I'm working on it. All right. Oh, I love your nail polish. Oh, it's chipped. Oh, your shoes are so pretty. Oh, they're so old. Okay. Oh, I just think you are a beautiful, beautiful person. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Acceptance includes things like compliments. And you know, a lot of us struggle to believe it, and we think that we have to believe it in order to accept it. No. You know what? If someone gives you a gift, you can accept it without believing it's the very best gift on the, gift on the planet, can't you? And you can accept a compliment without having to believe it. You could say, well, thank you very much. Thank you. What a kind thing for you to say. Oh, that is so thoughtful of you. Wow, how nice. The nicest thing I've heard all day for sure. Lots of ways to accept a compliment. And our job is to then shut down the little dialogue that goes on after that says, no, I don't. I look terrible. I don't believe them. I'm not a nice person. Whatever it is, all right? Our job is to accept the compliment and let it go with that. Thank you. They teach you in OA and AA and 12-step programs. Thank you. I think so, too. Try that one on for size. Hmm? See what you can do about that. Even if you only think the I think so, too part to yourself. Part of acceptance is getting used to accepting things. Okay? that we are so used to not accepting. All right, change. You know what? It's really hard to accept change, but change happens. It just does. Reality, how about that? Hard to accept reality. That's where denial comes in. We don't like reality, especially when it's not the way we want it to be, right? You've got to accept reality. And if you're denying reality, then you are rejecting reality, not accepting it, all right? Um, 
Well, we've got to accept things we don't like, don't we? We do. Here's mine. I have the disease of obesity and I am a food addict. Those are two things that were profoundly hard to accept because I felt that they were character assassinations, you know, that I was a lousy, lazy, rotten, awful person. No, those are my diseases that I must treat and I accept that. I must treat them for the rest of my life, period. There will never be an end to that. There will only be an always, okay? I always have to treat that. It can take time to accept that about ourselves, can't it? That we're gonna have to face and deal with and address our weight for the rest of our lives or we're gonna have to face and address our addictions for the rest of our lives, whatever that is, all right? Those are some of the things we don't like to accept, right? Um, how about this? Um, imperfection, gonna have to accept it. Not perfect, you're just not perfect. Let it go, right? Let it go, big part of acceptance. Okay, how about this one? Um, circumstances, conditions, situation. The way that it is, not it is what it is, but I accept that this is what is. Now, can you change it? Can you do something about it? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, okay? Either way, you've got to accept that reality. All right, limitations. Nobody likes limitations, nobody. If you've got physical limitations, you don't like them, do you? If you've got mental limitations, if you have emotional limitations, nobody likes those things. Nobody wants to be limited and told that they can't eat certain things, they can't work out in certain ways. Nobody wants limitations. Don't tell me what I can't do. Don't tell me what I can't eat. Don't tell me where I can't go. Don't tell me I can't drink that. Limitations. Going to have to accept the fact that if we want recovery, then there, it comes with limitations, which actually empower us. You know, they are actually freeing and liberating, but yet, boy, don't we look at it as a limitation instead of being empowered. Um, and the past, this is the last one. <sighs> Accepting the past. Nobody said we had to be happy about it, you know, but a lot of stuff happened to us in the past. There's a lot of trauma in this community, a lot of trauma, a lot of things were done to us, you know, and you can't undo those things. You can't deny them either. I'm not asking you to live there or relive it, but I am saying we've got to accept that past that it happened. And in doing so, we can make sure that it does not become our future, right? That's where that acceptance of the past comes in so that we can guarantee that we're not dragging it with us into our future. So those are some of the things that I think we do struggle to accept. And why does it matter? Why is this acceptance stuff, this idea of letting go, why is this so important to recovery? Well, here's what I think. I think that when we learn to accept the things that we struggle to accept, the hard stuff, the things we may not like, that gives us the power to accept freedom, Peace, hope, love, joy, and blessings. See, if we're busy rejecting things, then we are hard pressed to be in a position where we can accept things, right? Accepting that freedom, that freedom. I want to be free from obesity and the way that I can do that is to treat it. Not to be cured of it, but to treat it and to respect it. And same with my food addiction, all right? And that's what gives me peace. But I can only accept that if I accept the reality of the fact that I am in recovery for food addiction. Got it? You guys following here? Accepting love means I accept the fact that I am worthy of being loved. And I accept that I have value. Well, if you're rejecting that, it's gonna be hard for you to accept love, isn't it? Okay? Joy and hope accepting those things. We have to acknowledge them. First, you have to acknowledge the fact that you've probably been rejecting them by complaining all the time or just saying there's no hope. Nothing will ever change. My life is miserable. It's horrible and bad and wrong and terrible and focusing on the negative. All right? Accept the positive. Reject the negative. Not reality, but the stuff that pollutes our minds and keeps us from accepting every good thing. And so I'm going to end the show with this. And you know, there's a reason. This is such a prominent, prevalent, profound part of a 12-step program like Overeaters Anonymous, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, Narcotics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, 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 um, Sex Addicts Anonymous, okay? 
all of those. There is a reason that this is said at absolutely every meeting. Are you ready? And I know you know it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That is all part of acceptance, you guys. In order to be able to change something, we have to accept it the way that it is. We also have to accept the fact that we may not be able to change it and still have serenity in that knowledge, that sure knowledge that even if we can't change it, we can be okay and we'll survive, all right? And sometimes, boy, we just don't know what to do about it and that is where that gift of wisdom comes into play. Is this something I can change or not? You know, is this something that I have to accept on life's terms or is this something that I have power to change? So that's my talk about acceptance, you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it today. A little life lesson. I'm going to sign off and let you go because I've gone plenty long enough as usual. I'll come back and read all of your glorious comments. Um, and I want to remind you all to please share this program. It's so important that we get the message out there. I'm getting new viewers all the time. It's very, very exciting. Um, you know, I love to think that, well, sure, everybody should know about me already, and yet they don't, right? Well, it's a big world, you guys, and we are partitioned into lots and lots and lots of little bitty pieces, right? You know, we're like a million piece puzzle here, trying to put it all together, just try and find two pieces that fit together. So I want to invite you guys to share this program, courageously share this program. There are a few of you out there who are master sharers, and I'm talking about my mama, I'm talking about Melissa, I'm talking about Christy, uh, a few of you out there. I want to encourage more of you to take that step and share this program, because you know what? When you share it into some of your groups, I'm finding that people are coming out of those, those groups as if they're climbing out of a hole saying, I had no idea you were out there. And I've just been living over here with all these people celebrating all these great and wonderful things and I feel terrible about myself and I need some hope. And you offer hope over on your show. Well, isn't that what we want to do? We want to offer hope, right? So please share the program. It's yours for the taking. I hope you will accept it. All right, I'm going to sign off and remind you all to have courage, seek peace, embrace joy, and above all, accept your recovery. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.